this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm comparing two interesting wireless headsets, the EPOS H3 Pro Hybrid and the Astro A30 Wireless. This is the 2022 edition, and as you'll see, these headsets are interestingly comparable in a number of different ways. They both offer Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz connectivity, as well as 3.5 mm connections. They both have removable microphones, and they both offer some very nice comfort and good sound as well. So I want to talk to you about the differences between them and why they're interesting in their own right. For example, the EPOS H3 Pro Hybrid is interesting because it has active noise cancellation, which is not something that you see on many gaming headsets, whereas the Astro A30 is obviously very striking. Now these are obviously two colors and there are various different other options for both headsets. So you can get some really nice style out of them and design is obviously gonna be different depending on which one you choose. Now they are both also very capable and obviously also multi-device compatible. You'll see that in the box you get a number of different things. I already mentioned that they have Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz. So you can see the EPOS headset out of the box here has a 3.5 mil connection, its own USB dongle for use on PC, as well as an extension cable and a USB-C charging cable. And obviously it has Bluetooth connectivity on the headset itself. So plenty of options there for connection. The Astro A30 wireless offers up similar sort of connections with its own little dongle, which works on Xbox or PC, and there's also a PlayStation variant as well. It also comes with a 3.5 mil connection, and again, it has USB-C charging, and it also has Bluetooth. So you have multi-device compatibility, and that's one of the things that's interesting about both of these, is they also will offer up that dual connectivity, so you can connect to via 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth at the same time, and listen to both devices at the same time as well. So you can listen to music on your phone while you're gaming, for example, or take calls while gaming, or use a voice chat service on your phone while playing on console, for example. So lots of flexibility there. Now, I should note that I have reviewed both of these on PC because I am a PC gamer, so I'm going to talk about my experiences with them like that. And you'll see, as I said, multiple different cables included in the box. And when it comes to the connectivity, the EPOS H3 Pro is pretty cool because it has obviously all these different options. But one problem that it does have is the battery life. So I found that the battery life isn't that amazing. They claim about 19 hours with active noise cancellation on. Now I will note that the ANC is fantastic and that does actually block out a fair amount of noise. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. But you'll see obviously you have this small little dongle that gives you the wireless connection. Now the range on that isn't as good as the Astros in my opinion. It doesn't go quite as far. I found that after going a couple of rooms away it disconnected, but it reconnects really easily. The design's also interesting because it has a flip to mute boom microphone, but you can also remove that and it's held in place with magnets. And then that cap that you saw a second ago can just be put over where the microphone sits. So if you're not using that microphone, if you use an external mic, or if you want to use these headphones as headphones out of the house with your phone, for example, just whether you're on the train, plane, or whatever else, you can do that because you can connect with Bluetooth or 3.5 mil connection. Obviously, removing the microphone makes them look less gamer-like. It uses USB charging, and it is important to note that you do need to charge it regularly because that powers the ANC, and this headset will not work without being powered. So you can't use the 3.5 mil connection if the headset doesn't have any power, which is a bit of a shame, and it's weird because you can turn the ANC off and it still won't work. And the Astro 30 wireless will work with 3.5 mil connection, even when it doesn't have battery, but it doesn't have active noise cancellation. So that's one big difference between them. Similarities though, USB-C charging, as I said. Now I did find that this lasted a little bit longer in my use, and that's probably because it doesn't have active noise cancellation. I found it was charging it far less and so it wins in that regard. Also, the range is better. It has this little dongle here, which has two different modes. There's a button on it that you can press that switches between Xbox controller style mode and PC mode. And there is a different, obviously, variation of this for PlayStation. You can also buy a USB-C dongle separately. So you can use that to connect up to a Nintendo Switch and other devices. It too has a removable microphone and I'll leave samples of both mics at the end of this video. It's worth noting as well that the Astro 30 has built-in microphones so that you can use it for calls and things like that when you're out of the house. So keep that in mind too. 
the fact that you can take off both mics of both headsets and then use them as headphones is pretty appealing. And obviously the Astra has a really nice sort of design style to it. The white one's really nice in my opinion, it really stands out. Obviously you can get a black one too that also looks the business. And you will notice some other things of interest in a second as well. It has quite revolvable ear cups. You can see obviously you can lay them flat and that's one point of note is that you can turn them flat. So if you'd like to do that, and then put them on your neck when you're not using them, for example. You can. You can't do that with the EPOS H3 Pro Hybrid. They won't turn that way. You will see that a nice adjustable headband that has good padding in it too, and some nice tilt all around. Now, the speaker tags on the outside can be removed. You can take those off, and underneath you see a very nice looking style to it. it looks really snazzy. You can also buy additional speaker tags to customize the look and feel of it. On the side, you'll find the various different controls for power and Bluetooth, as well as a little joystick down the bottom for controlling the volume and other controls. You'll see that the ear cups are removable. They're held in place with magnets, and they're really easy to get off, but not so easy that you accidentally knock them off all the time. I found that I didn't really knock them off at all, and I am really clumsy, so that's definitely a testament to the, how good that setup is. You can also see there's some really plush memory foam cushioning there. They have a faux leather finish on them, which means you have some good passive noise cancellation, which means that it blocks out a fair amount of noise as standard. We also have a really nice comfort. It's a lightweight headset with a good clamping force, and I found it really comfortable to wear and to game with. Sound-wise, it's also really decent offers up a nice bass to it and a good range of audio that you can tweak within the app and I'll show you a bit more on that later on. However, I do find that little joystick a bit frustrating to use. It's not convenient or well thought out in my mind. It's not easy to get used to. The EPOS H3 Pro Hybrid has a bit of a different setup. Part of that hybrid name is partially down to these ear cushions, which as you can see are a mix of sort of nice soft material and then faux leather on the outside. What this does is it works really nice to offer up that passive noise cancellation while also keeping your ears nice and cool so it's not as hot as your standard sort of faux leather finish where it's faux leather all the way around, which means it is nicer to wear for longer periods. Also, combining passive noise cancellation from the faux leather and then active noise cancellation from the ANC on the headset means that you can really block out a lot of sound. And I was surprised by just how good this is. It's better than that on the Steel Series Nova Pro Wireless, which I tested out recently, which is another headset with ANC. Also, there's a lot to be said for the comfort of this headset. You can see some nice padding on the top and the ear cushions as well. Again, a really good clamping force on this, I found. And it is more adjustable. You will see that you can stretch it out a lot bigger. I find, personally, I believe that this will be better for bigger heads. So if you have a larger head, then you will find that this is better. The headband stretches out really well. You can see a nice solid metal headband under there. But also, it just pulls and out really far it seems like it's going to be quite durable you can twist it around nicely as i said you can't tilt the ear cups flat but you can tip them and tilt them in various different directions to show just how big it goes put it on my pac-man light which is pretty huge and you can see just how far that extends and then you can also see just how plush those cushions are as well put the two headsets side by side and you'll see quite a difference in them obviously astro looks a bit more plastic on video but I actually do feel like it's a good quality. It feels like a good, nice quality to it. You'll also see when you pop the ear cushions off that they're very comparable in terms of the size. The EPOS has a sort of more ear-shaped design to it rather than a square or rectangle. It has like a familiar ear shape, but you will notice that they're roughly the same in both terms of the depth and also the shape that the ear cushions have. So they're not terribly deep, either of them, but I didn't find that I had pressure from the ear cups against my ears while using them. However, if you have big ears that stick out really far, then you might find a problem. I only can speak about my personal experience, but I just wanted to demonstrate just how much you can tilt and turn each of them and the sort of differences between them. You'll notice, for example, that EPOS has more sort of up and down tilt in it than the Astra A30. Now, both headsets offer up that Bluetooth connectivity and the EPOS headset connects up and then you can use the smart button on there to adjust the audio in various different ways. So that Bluetooth button also doubles as a smart button where you can basically switch between the various EQ profiles that you can set up on the PC when you're using it. And it has EPOS gaming software, which you can basically use to customize the audio and tweak the microphone. I went into more depth on this in the review, so be sure to check that out to find out more about that. But it allows for some customization. The controls are also really straightforward. You basically have a volume dial on one side 
and other things. But one thing I will note is that if you turn Bluetooth on and obviously audio on, you can then connect up to two devices at once and you kind of have to turn them both off. And as I said, if you also turn on ANC, the battery life just isn't that great. They claim 19 hours. I was finding it was a lot less than that. I had to charge it quite regularly, a lot more than the Astro E30. But obviously, if you're not using Bluetooth and you have ANC turned off, then it might last longer. But it is a bit of a strange quirk that you do have to have power to use a 3.5 mil connection. And I think that's worth mentioning. For me personally, I use it for mic monitoring. And so it was a bit frustrating to have to plug in two cables. You do get some warnings when it's running low, though. Astro's controls, as you can see on the side, fairly straightforward. You have a mic mute button. So where the EPOS has a flip to mute microphone, the Astro has two microphone, obviously, options. You can switch between them in the app, but you can also mute them on the headset itself. So plenty of flexibility in what you can do there. Overall design wise, I suppose it's a personal preference on what you prefer. I think the EPOS is a really nice looking headset. This follows up from other series of headsets that they've released recently. The H6 Pro, for example, very similar aesthetic to them. And that's no bad thing because it's a really nice design style. It feels durable, it looks premium, but also it doesn't look like a gamer headset. Once you take that microphone off, it's fairly understated. There's no RGB lighting, obviously and you can just actively use them as headphones when you want to listen to music when you're around elsewhere. So you're not home, you have fairly straightforward access to those things. As I said though, one frustration you'll see is you have to plug in 3.5 mil and USB sometimes when it's running low on battery. You do get an audible notification in the headset when you turn it on of how much power is left. And also then again, when it's running low, so it will let you know which can get annoying because it's quite loud, but also it's good to have that sort of cue in your ear cushions to let you know that you need to plug it in when you do. So you're not going to suddenly run out of battery. However, if you do run out of battery, you can't then just plug in the 3.5 mil connection and carry on. And that's a bit of an oddity and not something that you suffer with with the Astro headset because you can just use that with 3.5 mil if you want. Now the Astro A30 wireless is controlled via an app which you can download on your phone, gives you access to various different settings. Weirdly, when I tested it, you couldn't use it with Astro Command Center or Logitech's G-Hub software on PC. You could only really control the settings from your phone, but you can adjust things like side tone, change different custom profiles, create your own EQ settings. You can also turn on noise gate settings. So you'll see there's various different settings from turning off to low, medium and high noise gate. You can also turn the side tone up and down and you can adjust the settings for both the internal microphone and the boom microphone as well. So you have plenty of customization there. You also have dual connectivity so you can listen to music as you like on your phone as well. And that joystick on the bottom gives you control over it. So you have media control there where you can basically pause play and skip music. However, I do find it really fiddly. So it's a multi-direction joystick as you're probably used to. You don't often see them on the headsets and it goes in place of the volume wheel and basically does multiple different things. And I found it really fiddly to use and a bit annoying, but I suppose after time, once you get used to it, it won't be that bad. Both headsets are fantastic. Which one you prefer is obviously going to be down to what you want. The ANC certainly sells the EPOS H3 Pro. I personally prefer the battery life and looks and comfort of the Astro 30 wireless, but they're both great headsets. I personally don't feel like there's much in it in terms of the difference in the audio quality. They both have a similar frequency response. They're both nice and loud, and they both deliver great audio for gaming, music, and movies. Decent bass and a really rich sound from both. So I can't fault either of them in that department. And I found the experience to be really good. Now it's worth noting that EPOS has stereo and 7.1 surround sound options that you can switch between in the EPOS gaming suite software. Astro only has a couple of different options on the app and there seems to be more profiles on the EPOS headset, but you can offer up custom EQ profiles that you can tweak yourself within the software for both. So you can customize the sound a bit. However, out of the box on default settings, I thought they both sounded great and they both deliver really good positional audio and in-game experience, which is obviously important. For the money, I think they're both fantastic for a multitude of reasons. It's really down to personal preference in the end. Now stick with me now as I'm going to do a sound test so you can hear the microphone difference between the two. And here I am with the EPOS microphone and you will hear what the sound quality is like there. And you can immediately notice that there is a pickup of sort of wind sounds. So you can really hear the puffs in there. And I think that's an important point because obviously you need to make sure you've got it in a good position. But you can have, there is some flexibility in where it will go now. As I said, it's flipped to mute. 
so you can flip that up and mute it and it clicks when you do so there's also side tones so i can hear myself while i'm talking which is beneficial when you have that passive and active noise cancellation on the headset so it blocks out some of the sound you will notice over here that small extra microphone and that's designed to help with the ANC and the quality of the microphone as well to give you a better quality sound out of it. It is compressed but you would expect that from a wireless headset and you can adjust some of the settings within the EPOS gaming suite which I'll show you in a minute. It's certainly not as good as a dedicated microphone but it does sound reasonably good and obviously the fact that you can take it off when you don't want to use it and just put that cap on and then use it as Bluetooth headphones instead and as you can see looks pretty nice on the head, fairly understated, good colours, nice design to it, I really like it for a number of different reasons. And here I am with the Astro A30 wireless and you can see we're in wireless mode and also with the boom microphone and just point of note it has both dual microphone and built-in microphone and both of them have side tone and you can control those within the app as well. It is quite compressed as you can hear and it does also pick up wind from the mouth if you're not careful so you need to sort of get it into the right position where it won't do that, play around with the settings in the software and tweak the mic sound so it sounds good. This is obviously what it's like on PC. I can't speak to the experience on console, but it's not fantastic. However, it does offer up the option to take this off and then use the built-in microphones to uh, place calls or something if you're out and about. So you connect it via Bluetooth on your phone. You can make calls with either microphone. You also have the option to use either microphone whether you're playing on console or PC, so you don't have to use the boom mic, although obviously you get the better experience out of that because it's close to your mouth and it's theoretically better quality. If you want to hear both microphones, be sure to check out the review because I've done sound touch tests of both of them so you can hear exactly what the quality of that's like. But you can see the difference of how this sits on the head and what it looks like. It's really stylish. I think the white one looks really nice. It also has a really sort of nice comfortable fit on top and nice clamping force all round. So hopefully this has been an interesting insight into both of these headsets. Be sure to check out the reviews as well as all the information in the description below to find out more. Also, if you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, smash that like button and let me know in the comments what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching and a big shout out to my YouTube members for supporting the channel. Hit that join button to find out the benefits of being a member. Thanks for watching. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.